Winning the Delano Pearl Award is Portuguese driver Gaspar de Souza with Marcus Leonard on the outside of the front row. Leonard has never been off the front row here, and this is his home race. The, one of the major news items for this week is actually a rather curious uh, suggestion. The, uh, the American Stock Car Championship is uh, having quite a few of its cars uh, being converted into the new uh, FARC a la cars, and... Um, as a result, it looks like that, that the ASCC could be using uh, TM Master Cup Series cars from 2011 and before uh, because there's been uh, quite a few uh, uh, ASCC team owners actually here at British Columbia um, uh, sort of uh, trying to purchase some, uh, some old uh, Master Cup Series cars. I don't think too many of them have been sold to them though because uh, uh, come, come this morning I didn't see too many of them in the paddock. However, I would, uh, I would assume that people like Team Sai USA will still have a, a full uh, roster of ASCC machinery available. There was, uh, qualifying was in the rain, and there were several incidents in qualifying, which meant that uh, the 110% rule was waived, and uh, as a result of the 43 cars were entered, all 43 were allowed to start, even though quite a few of them uh, had problems. Here's the, uh, a look at the track map. We should see maybe the most dramas in turn 9, turn 12, and if you're very brave, you can make a passing maneuver coming into turn 1 or into turns 15 and 16, that section of the track called the Bear Trap. Uh, we have had a couple of other spin minor spins during practice, but nothing, uh, nothing too major, really. Uh, anyways, Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Uh, only 42 cars will be starting here because this was Eric Jackson who was making his first Master Cup uh, start in some time. He rode off the Dalton Johnson Motorsports car in this incident right here in uh, um, final practice. Both these incidents on the same lap, destroying the front of the uh, LaCoyaBusters.org uh, Tenere. Gaspar D'Souza leads the field of 42 to green, gets a great jump over Leonard, and look at Ben Haran making a hero of himself coming into the first corner. Ben Huron, number 43, in the Huntley. He's got an independent trophy to win today, and he is, he is in a hurry to get to the front. He's got quite a few points to make up, and this 43 car is on the charge early. And that was a brave, brave maneuver for him to make. He needs to finish, I think, well inside the points in order to, to, to steal the independent trophy away from Tom Moore. And uh, Huron. On his way to doing that, uh, Kate Taylor in that 40, in that 56 car also in... Oh, Ian Cooper's around in the first lap in turn 9. Pliskin gave him a bump. Gave, turned the 777 car, who was third fastest in final practice. Uh, I don't think Ian Cooper's going to be all that happy about that, especially because tire wear is a big problem. The tires in that 777 car are undoubtedly shot, but... Um, now here we go. Looking at Melanie Cleave now as there was uh, more triple. Oh, into the back of Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux gets a bit of a hurry up. Oh, no, that's Taub. That's Taub in that yellow car. Oh, Melanie, that was uh, your teammate for next year that you just ran into. And that was uh, and that was the car, that, and that was uh, one of your stable mates, technically, that you, were, that you just took out. Oh, Melanie, what have you done? Uh, oh, we got Woodard out of it in the 41. Greg Woodard, car 41, he's got a lot of front end damage as well as Matthias Taub. Uh, yep, he's calling in that he's got a lot of front end damage and that there are warning lights flashing in the, uh, in the cockpit. But Melanie Klevno came from way far back, trying to avoid Adrian Devereaux. Chris Johan spins off in the bear trap. Uh, tried to avoid Adrian Devereaux, hit the brakes when she saw Devereaux slowing down, which makes me wonder what Adrian Devereaux was doing dawdling in the middle of the racetrack like that. On board with Danny Sabin in the 81 car. Ran his last independent trophy race and he had his home race in New York. He was entered for this one as a promoter's option. Uh, this 81 car. He's got Paul Lyons in the 44 right next to him. Lyons in uh, the Black Diamond Racing Tremwell. Also one of the promoter's option entries. Uh, that black and pink car. We were actually kind of surprised to see Lyons in that car because there was uh, some suggestions that there would be a different driver in car 44. New livery on Friedrich Jaeger's car, thankfully. Uh, the kind of gray car that he had earlier in the season, uh, and exactly. Not quite as appealing as this one. Uh, much better paint job that they have on the factory Vern Storm. We're not sure what he's doing next year. He might be driving for Melrose Racing Team in the third car. But Gaspar Souza, car number double zero, leads the race. He's never won a TM Master Cup Series race. I'm a little surprised he hasn't been able to sort of steal one away from some of the big guns whenever things have gone wrong. But uh, the middle part of the season for D'Souza um, was messy to say the least. But uh, 
Looks like he's returned to form. Got into a little tussle with Lewis Kingston at uh, New York. Um, something that probably was avoidable. It's Quiggles Jr. and Rachel Rainsford do battle here. Uh, Rachel Rainsford in the white Volpe uh, in that 14 car. Having a great weekend so far. This, uh, this could be Rachel's last run in the Volpe, and uh, that might be a bit of a disappointment if it is. Uh, she's, uh, we're not sure if she, what she's doing. We've got Luke Ocean entering the pits in the Forever Blue car. Luke Ocean making his series debut. Not a whole lot of experience behind that team there. Uh, this is Ian Cooper in, the, in that magenta car. He is, uh, he's got the fastest lap of the race actually right now. He actually pitted. Uh, he pitted, and he's now running back in 34th. And uh, Adrian Devereaux right behind him. Uh, these two are the quickest cars on the racetrack. I think largely because there's nobody around them. Here is Ben Huron running up to f in 15th. And at this point, if he just brings it home where he is right now, the Independence Trophy has his name written right on it. So this, uh, the, f the number 43 Huntley, uh, could steal the Independence Trophy, and it would be a fantastic effort from Ben Huron. We're not quite sure where he figures into the silly season, but it would be a shame if he was off the full-time grid as Quiggles Jr. is out. He had a great start to the Sealander from 6th. He had a great showing this weekend. He's had a bit of an up-and-down season. I'm not quite sure he'll be a serious threat for Rookie of the Year, but uh, very unfortunately, this, this is uh, Quiggles Jr. is technically his home race because his team is based in this area. Kurt Pliskin, the 16, is building somewhat of a train behind him. However, I'm not sure if it's Pliskin or Duff in the 74 that's directly causing it. We've got Yamino Tenshi in the midnight out from 18th. Big disappointment there. Tenshi, one of the, uh, one of the crowd favorites. Uh, for sure in car number 25 as we got uh, Leonard and Ashby uh, doing battle for position here is Leonard's uh, oh Leonard a bit wide Leonard off Kingston off and um, that 17 car has been having a um, not necessarily the best of weekends either uh, but uh, certainly put it together in qualifying Leonard in the triple nine car there's Michael Sykes one of the title contenders might remember Michael Sykes and Zelda Ashby are uh, the main championship contenders along with Matthias Taub and Taub is out of, is out of the race so it's really now between Sykes and Ashby and uh, Michael Sykes is wants to get around Marcus Leonard who owns the car that Ashby drives so and uh, Marcus Leonard indicated that there could be some team tactics um, being played with the FPO cars one of those three is out and I wouldn't be surprised if Alert didn't do likewise However, Chris Davenport, the other alert car, is a bit far back for that. As Ashby in the 55, trying to hang on here to see if she can salvage a decent... See if she can uh, at least finish ahead of the five car is the goal she won at New York. But uh, the legend of Zelda Ashby this year has been that. She's been able to pick up, pick up the pieces when other people have had mishaps. I do believe she leads the series in top ten finishes, as you see the running order on the left-hand side. Zach Duff, car number 74, having a pretty strong run here. Uh, big pat on the back. The Michelin Suns guys have really done very well on some of these, on some of the longer road courses. That's Chris Davenport poking his nose in um, in that six car. I don't think he got that one done. But uh, Zach Duff in car number 74 and Kevin Dwyer in the 72 having very strong runs this year. As here comes Chris Davenport hard on the brakes on the inside of Luciano. Is he going to get it done? Yes, looks like he is. Here comes Packer Carroll in car number two. Uh, no, Carroll not able to get that one done, but Chris Davenport. Talk about, um, this is a different Chris Davenport than the one we've seen in the first half of the season. He's had an incident-free weekend. His confidence is sky high. And uh, Davenport having a, having a fantastic run so far this week as Scott Bates in the 88 car. Uh, you may wonder why he's as far back as he is. Like his teammate Ian Cooper, he also pitted very early. A cut tire on car number 88 has really set him back. However, Ian Cooper still has fastest lap of the race. We're looking at the new livery on Darren Cardell's car. Cardell, the uh, the winner of the uh, Cardell, the winner at Ohio. Adrian Devereaux has just set fastest lap of the race at car number one. Uh, he's uh, he's got uh, the two-time champion. Won the championship the past two years. Really, it's not looking very good for him to repeat. No one has ever won three in a row. Adrian Devereaux will likely be uh, eliminated from championship contention. He really needs to, in order for him to stay in title contention, he needs to really get uh, in the top five. And he's way back, way out, well out of it uh, at this point. So here's Rachel Rainsford running in third, having a solid run here. And we're looking now at Ian Cooper in the 777 car. 
who I think is, at this point, trying to trade fastest laps with Adrian Devereaux. These two cars are still the two quickest cars on the racetrack right now, and they're so far back, um, they're going to be encountering some of the lower midfielders uh, before long. As uh, Michael Sykes now beginning to apply pressure to Rachel Rainsford in the 14. And now Sykes smells a podium, uh, and he's going to try to get around car number 14 right here. No, not he's not quite close enough, but I think he's going to try to set Rainsford up for a run either in the mousetrap or possibly a run down into turn 9. Um, we'll keep watching the red 5 of Michael Sykes, the Welshman. He is retiring at the end of this year. He'd like to go out on a high. Um and uh, end his career, his uh, fantastic career with uh, with a championship as Gaspar D'Souza, car number double zero, the Clever Media Tremwell pits on the end of lap 10. So the double zero is going to uh, set the pace here as far as pit stops are concerned. Looks like we got, uh, oh, Ashby is in, but Rachel Rainsford has stayed out, Michael Sykes is in, Leonard is in, Kevin Dwyer stays out, Luciano, Packer, Carroll stay out. Uh, all, all, all three of the Volpies have stayed out because that's Roderick in the orange car there. Davenport into the pits, you see right there, Kuznetsov in as well. And on lap 11, here's Rachel Rainsford in the 14, entering pit lane. Uh, Rachel Rainsford, car number 14, try, hoping that this that she's done a fast enough lap and that the pit crew can do a fast enough pit stop to gain some track position on Michael Sykes in the 5. However, uh, Sykes has the advantage of having a potentially shorter pit stop by pitting a lap earlier. Kevin Dwyer in in the 72. Uh, there you see Luciano in. Both the other two Volpes. No one's staying out to push in another lap. And uh, I think that's that might be Kuznetsov in that red car. But, um, that could be also be Cameron Taylor. Those couple cars look very similar. A couple red cars. But Ian Cooper in the 777 car, remember, he pitted very early on that lap. Uh, on uh, lap two, so this triple seven car bit off cycle, so it could be interesting to see what happens to him as the race goes on. Now, here's where the 14 is going to come in. There's Pliskin, which means that Michael Sykes has beaten Rachel Rainsford in the pit stop cycle. Per Kurt Pliskin in the 16 tries to challenge Rachel. Duh, no, she shuts the door a little bit on Kurt Pliskin. Kurt Pliskin, who's had a very up and down season as Brandon LaRoe is out. The car number 24 out with uh, that looks like a pretty comprehensive engine uh, blow up on that car. Uh, Laro, uh, he's had a better season in TM Lights than he has here in uh, his Independence Trophy campaign. His, his uh, TM Lights efforts might get land him a full-time drive next year, and that'd be nice to see him finally make the step up. Michael Sykes, car number five, now begins to put the pressure on Ashby, and uh, this could have champion. This has championship implications right here, no, no doubt about it, because now Sykes is setting up Ashby for a run down into nine. There's that slight kink in, uh, coming in eight. You see the lead to Suze has Sykes pokes his nose out. Ashby shuts the door, has to move back over a little bit. Michael Sykes is going to stick his nose in. Here he comes, the Welshman on the inside. The red five, is Ashby going to get a better run off? Doesn't quite look like it. Looks like they're fairly even for the run down into 12. Michael Sykes, car number five, trying to keep Ashby at bay, giving Ashby just, just barely enough room over there. Ashby trying to uh, squeeze back, but here they come down into 12. Sykes is definitely going to have the advantage here. And Ashby swings it wide away from the curbing onto the AstroTurf there. And now Ashby's got the edge here. This is great stuff side by side here between Michael Sykes and Zelda Ashby in the battle for a second. Jasper D'Souza is loving this because he's pulling away from these two. Coming now down here into 14. Ashby's getting out a bit wide. Michael Sykes has got the position right now, but here we come into the bear trap right here. Uh, not exactly the most imaginative corner name, or po quite possibly the most random, as Ashby blows the blows it and goes wide off the course, and Michael Sykes takes over second, and Ashby down in quite a few positions. Ashby, I think, fought that one a bit longer than she should have. Went down even further. Kevin Dwyer running 11th right now. Here's Luciano right there in car number three. Gets it in a bit hot, loses the rear end. Kevin Dwyer off the course. He keeps it going, keeps it going. He's, I think he's going to be down to about 14th or so. 15th, it looks like. Um, but it looks like, oh, is the 56, yes, the 56 car is coming into the pit lane, so he'll be back up to 14th, it looks like, in um, the 72 car. 14th or 15th is where Kevin Dwyer is going to be. Leonid Roderick in the four right behind him. Roderick, the four-time series champion. Kevin Dwyer, the son of the six-time champion Ben Dwyer, Benny Dwyer, great driver from the 80s and the 90s, as you have Jenny Kuznetsov, one of the other fan favorites, is up to 15th place in uh, this red and gold Katsev, 
really sort of taken over lead status over um, over at Cats of Engineering after Yulia Nasova was uh, unceremoniously sacked. Um, Arjo Kekin in, in car number nine running up in eight, uh, up in 18th place. The Gesslers have been really been struggling all weekend, and uh, it has it's been a very very long week for them. And with Taub out of the race, that's going to dampen their spirits. Uh, ever, uh, you, uh, no doubt about it. <clears throat> Scott Bates right behind here too. Here's Peter Short in that 22 car, and the guy that nobody seems to care about, Paul Lyons in the 44. I jokingly say that because Paul Lyons seems to have been, um, his career has been kicked to the curb, metaphorically speaking, repeatedly, and he keeps coming back, and um, Paul Lyons needs a bit of love, so we're giving him some love right now. Not sure what either one of those two guys is doing next year, but unfortunately for both of them, their teammate leads the race, so, not, so they're not exactly a good day for them so far as as uh, Packer Carroll's pitting the two car. I wonder if that's for a puncture because I'm not sure why he'd be pitting. That's kind of a shame because this is one of Packer's legitimately good runs in this number two car, which he's uh, been few and far between for him this year. He's either been having solid runs, uh, being very anonymous, or doing some of the most boneheaded moves I've seen this year, to be quite honest, as Lewis Kingston appears to have a problem with the 17, and he pulled that one off into the grass immediately as soon as he knew he had a problem. He must have heard something go, but either way, 17 car out of it, just like his sponsor. The, um... Anyways, Ben Huron up to 11th in uh, car number 43. Uh, ben Huron in the hunt lane. I uh, have a feeling at this rate, unless something happens to him, he's got the Independence Trophy all but uh, locked up. And I have a feeling part of that was due to that very, very bold move he made in the first corner. So I think Ben Huron will win this. Little could win the independent trophy literally because of first corner bravery as Cameron Taylor speaking of bravery sees a hole sneaks to the center of nine and coming out of nine he's side by side with Scott Bates Cameron Taylor is going to be driving for Team Star USA next year uh, as they're making their return to the Master Cup Series I'm pretty sure that ASCC prize money whatever pennies they're paying out for that um, are, uh, are uh, going to be helped by Cameron whatever money Cameron Taylor brings whatever mob uh, but what he uh, he may lack there Certainly doesn't uh, lack in talent, that's for sure. Cameron Taylor been uh, kind of an unsung hero uh, in TM Lights this year. Hasn't had a, uh, been very lucky, but we have seen flashes of brilliance from him. He also came second in the TM Lights Championship uh, last year. So Cameron Taylor in this Sierra sponsored car. Um, we think the sponsor Sierra could be moving over to another team as Scott Bates skates off the course. Back on track, right in between the Black Diamond guys. Um, the sponsor, Sierra, could be moving over to Hodges Walter. That could be uh, an interesting uh, turn of events to see the Hodges Walter cars uh, in uh, that Sierra candy red as we see Michael Sykes closing in on Gaspar D'Souza. Game on! Gaspar D'Souza in that double zero car. He's um, uh, going to be seeing that red five get larger in his mirrors as Kurt Pliskin hits the pits and Chris Davenport as well. These are scheduled stops, we're being told. And... Um, I don't think Davenport is terribly happy about this pit strategy, and frankly, I don't know why he would be. And um, I think what Alert might be counting on is to try to get a leapfrog Daven Davenport in front of Ashby on uh, some pit stop cycles to hold Ashby up. Luciano Salvarol doesn't care anything about this. Uh, uh, actually, to be quite honest, very interesting team orders fiasco that could be going on between Alert and FPO. He has, he's uh, leaving Hot as Walter at the end of the year. Hot as Walter, not really in title, in title contention. They've given Luciano a race-winning car. He's trying to make the most of it as Marcus Leonard pits the triple nine car. Here we are. Battle for the lead as Michael Sykes is really closing on D'Souza. He's making a move down into eight. D'Souza shuts the door. D'Souza sh slams the door shut in eight. That uh, high-speed kink Sykes does not really have enough of a run to get, uh, to get on D'Souza into nine. Gasper D'Souza now. Double zero car. We're closing in on halfway as D'Souza pits the double zero car. Sykes stays out an extra lap. Michael Sykes is going to go for broke and try to run one hot lap to see if that will be enough to help him leapfrog D'Souza in the pit lane. So far, this race has shown that, that's not, that that might not be the case, but the Welshman def desperately wants to win another race because that will really help him in the, uh, in the, with the whole point situation. Sykes pits the red five. One lap after D'Souza pit the double zero. So, now we'll see where he's going to come out in relation to the double zero car. As he's 
uh, very slowly making his way down pit lane. A very slow pit speed here, but Luciano Savarol has stayed out an extra lap, so Savarol uh, going for broke here a little bit. Um, they're, Otis as Walter definitely trying the strategy card to see if they can get Luciano a win before he leaves the team. So uh, Luciano had almost had two wins uh, this year. Michael Sykes leaves the pit lane. Where's the double zero car? Where's the Souza? Michael Sykes has beat the Souza in the pit lane battle. Michael Sykes in the red five assumes the lead of the race. Gaspar Souza is second, and as you may have seen him in the background, Ian Cooper is currently running in third. But remember, he's off cycle, so. Uh, he's definitely a, a joker in the deck a little bit here. This triple seven car could be, could factor in late in the race, uh, especially because he's been he's been making quite a bit of uh quite uh, the fuel mileage there. Uh, his, the fuel economy that that triple seven car has been making is actually quite extraordinary. Same with uh, Scott Bates in the 88, Adrian Devereaux in the one. Here is the 55 of Ashby now as we look off the back of Scott Bates. Speaking of Team EFR. That's Arto Kekkonen right behind him, and that's Silver Nine. Uh, it's the other Gessler. Uh, this has been a pretty interesting battle here. Arto makes a move. Going into nine. And Scott Bates is see what he has to say about that. No, not quite. Kekkonen does not get a very good exit. Scott Bates now side by side with Arto Kekkonen. The Finn is trying to give Scott Bates a hard time on trying to take another position from him. Arto is not really a championship factor, but. Uh, any, any kind of fact in the championship, but uh, at the same time, Arto would like to have more than one win this year. He was a championship favorite last year, didn't win the title, but uh, this year has been a bit of a struggle for Arto, but we've still seen that uh, very familiar kind of blinding speed out of the very um, um, antisocial Finn uh, as uh, Kekkonen tries to clear Scott Bates. No, Bates is still fighting back. The 88 card. Dies into 15, trying to get around, trying to hold off Arto Kekkonen, but now it's too much. He's thrown it off, doesn't hit the wall, but Scott Bates, that, that brave dive certainly cost him. Luciano, where is he going to, he, Luciano leaves the pit lane uh, after all of this, and he's going to cycle right behind Kurt Pliskin. That's right in front of Ashby, that 55 car. Kurt Pliskin is off cycle. Uh, Davenport is behind this battle. So it looks like Alert's gamble to put uh, to get Davenport in the way of Ashby. Uh, not exactly working out quite as well as they had thought, but Michael Sykes is leading the race, and that's what counts for that team. They last This team last won the championship when they were still called um, Flash Racing back in 09 with Leonid Roderick at the wheel. And Michael Sykes, uh, he learned quite a bit from Roderick when they were teammates as uh, we got... Uh, Chris Davenport and Ashby here. That's the last car Ashby wants to see in a rearview mirror is Chris Davenport because Davenport, well, to put it uh, bluntly, Chris Davenport has been known for throwing his car into the wall and other cars. Um, really, the only thing Davenport hasn't hit at some point this year is the base car. And uh, for all we know, he may have even hit that. Uh, he's even got been, uh, he's even hit something uh, in, the, in one of the uh, parking lots I do recall earlier this year. Um, that's a story for another time. Um, <clears throat> Chris Davenport, car number six. Uh, destroyer of rental cars, race cars. Uh, he hasn't hit a track marshal, thankfully. Um, or the pace car. So, uh, uh, but again, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen a different Chris Davenport in the second half of this year. He's, uh, been, uh, very, very clean and very, very quick. He won at Quincy, but that was a race for everyone but him. Uh, pretty much through their car into the scenery. As Kuznetsov is running up in 12th place in this 8 car, you'll notice Arto Kekkonen has really been flying his way through the field. As Kekkonen now looking off the nose camera on the 9, going right on by the Russian, the very popular Russian rookie. You have Jenny Kuznetsov, he's returning to Katsev next year. As Kekkonen makes his way up to 12th place. Uh, ben Huron in this 43 car. I would imagine that... Um, He's uh, running ahead of Davina Henton here, but I would imagine uh, after this race there's going to be quite a few people, uh, quite a few team owners that haven't quite uh, solidified their driver lineups to see if um, to see about hiring him. There's been some of these part-time guys like Ben Huron, Carlos Raqueta, that have just been absolute magic when they're um, when they're in the car part-time. Sometimes it works out for a full season drive, sometimes not. Ben Huron, I have a feeling, could be something special. Uh, the young Welshman has uh, been uh, very, very strong in his limited outings in that hunt lane. Chris Davenport, car number six. Uh, oh, Pliskin's peeling off. Davenport is as well. And uh, 
So, there you go. As we got... Ah! Michael Sykes stuck behind one of the Lynx cars. And, uh... Oh, the Lynx cars. Yeah, they got Gessler engines in them. And, uh, Gessler, uh... They wouldn't happen to be the team owner. They wouldn't happen to be the, uh, suppliers for the, uh... Uh, Matthias Taubes car, wouldn't they? Uh, nah, nah. It's my imagination there. Uh, Melanie Cleveland uh, certainly wouldn't be holding up Michael Sykes to, uh, benefit Matthias Taubes uh, championship effort a little bit to give him a hard time, maybe get him to throw it off the scenery, maybe. Yeah, Cleveland is definitely get making a bid there. Uh, Melanie Cleveland on that 12 car is certainly not going to be, um, certainly not going to be, uh, too many people's best friend. Um, uh, because she's, she's being, she's, being a little, it's a little bit of a different Melanie Cleveno than we've seen. She's leaving the uh, uh, Lynx for Hot as Walter Racing next year. But, oh, whoa, she's shutting the door on everybody. So Melanie Cleveno not exactly earning too many friends today. Uh, and especially since she ran over um, the Hot as Walter lead driver, Adrian Devereaux, I would imagine that uh, uh, this week could be a little bit awkward. Well, despite the fact Melanie Cleveno in that 12 car, oh, like the Susan by over there, it does seem like she is having legitimate handling problems with that car, so maybe she's just struggling from uh, all of those, um, from uh, all that damage that she inflicted on herself. <clears throat> or maybe to earn more brownie points because she did take out Matthias Taub in the first lap. But anyways, uh, here we have uh, Marcus Leonard in the, tri in the triple nine car. Oh no, Kuznetsov in trouble! You have Jenny Kuznetsov, car number eight is in trouble. I think that it doesn't look like he's got a. It doesn't look like there's any smoke coming out the back of that car. Well, there's dust that he's kicking up, but it looks like he might have a cut tire on that car. He's got a long, long way to go for him to get back to the pit lane. If Jenny Kuznetsov in car number eight has been, uh, it's not been very lucky this year. There's been a couple of big, big results that uh, have uh, gone away, and this certainly is one of them. Kevin Dwyer on Chris Davenport. Davenport with the brave move again. Chris Davenport in this six car, uh, trying trying to get by Kevin Dwyer. The interesting is, thing is that Kevin Dwyer could be taking over Davenport's ride next year. Oh, uh, there's been uh, a couple of rumors to that effect that uh, Kevin Dwyer will be driving for Alert next year, alongside possibly Scott Stoidler, which would be interesting. But also Chris Johans has been rumored to this car, to this number six car. So I think the rumors surrounding what will be going on over at Alert are very interesting, especially because uh, we're expecting an announcement that Adam Sampson and uh, the Launch Energy, uh, the American Launch Energy Racing Team management will be splitting, uh, which will be interesting because none of the people that were originally there for Flash Racing are would be gone. As we've got a couple of cars entering the pit lane, but they're uh, running well down the order, anyways. Adrian Devereaux uh, running up in 12th right now. He's going to need uh, Sykes and Ashby to fail to finish, and he's going to need to pretty much win to get back to put himself back in title contention. Marcus Leonard leaves the pit lane in the triple nine car. As you may have noticed, the, the, quite a few cars have been uh, hitting pit lane. Leonard in car triple nine, getting a solid run. Ian Cooper in the triple seven as well. Is steadily working his way back into the into the contention. He's actually been running in the. I do believe he's running in the points right now. Uh, even with his pit strategy cycling out um, to where we think he'll be, but this uh, this triple seven car again could be a is definitely a wild card here in this race. As Pliskin and Devereaux battle for position, they're on kind of different pit strategies. Uh, Chris Davenport behind, not really a factor. Uh, but Kurt Pliskin in the 16 car is having a fine run today, even though uh, he did punt Ian Cooper in the first lap. And there has been no penalty issued out, which is which is baffling to say the least. Chris Davenport now could have a run on him, uh, on Kirk Pliskin, and uh, there's Adrian Devereaux far up the road there. Davenport trying to sneak one in on Kirk Pliskin in that 16 cars. Adrian Devereaux pits the one car, so we got final round of pit stops. As as well, it's been underway for a while. As uh, Cats have been, that's that's Kuznetsov has brought his car back to the pit lane. That took longer than it should have. Uh, the five is in, that is Michael Sykes, and uh, Gaspar D'Souza's pit as well. They pit on the same lap. Ashby in as well, so all the leaders pitting on the same lap. And there's the pit battle. No, Sykes is going to hold on to the lead, and he's going to extend his lead. The Black Diamond Racing pit crew has let, has let D'Souza down in that double zero car because Michael Sykes has got an even larger lead than he did before. And, and Michael Sykes has been dynamite on cold tires so far in this race. 
Chris Davenport, car number six, continues his uh, strong run this uh, this race. He's right behind Kurt Pliskin. Of course, now that I've said he's having a strong run, he'll probably revert to his normal antics of hitting everything in sight, but be that as it may, uh, Kurt Pliskin running right in front of Davenport, and uh, got Zach Duff here in the 74, again, one of the unsung heroes of the day, in uh, the Mitchell and Sons Juno uh, S3, as Roderick Pitts with him. Zach Duff in that 74, um, kind of a shame he doesn't have a fast car anymore, because, uh, well, when he was at Volpe, he didn't really do a whole lot, as you see the running order there on the left side. Uh, didn't really do much with it when he had a fast car, and uh, but he's had some great runs in that Mitchell and Sons car. Had a couple of wins at Volpe, but I uh, um, really can't say much much more about him. Axel Anderson could be joining uh, him over at Juno, over whichever whichever team will be running the Juno S3. Could be the, most likely that'll be the Mitchell and Sons. Uh, so we could see a Duff Anderson team. That would be an interesting combo. Axel Anderson. Uh, uh, speaking of which, won the TM Lights Championship yesterday, so it was uh, uh, good to see. Uh, Packer Carroll leads teammate Leonid Roderick. It's one of the few times we've seen that happen. Uh, it's usually been the other way around, or uh, as we saw it earlier in the year at uh, Rota at Road Atlanta. Leonid Roderick coming to lap Packer Carroll, and uh, well, that didn't always end too well because uh, Packer Carroll, he'll, he'll be leaving Volpe at the end of this year. I think Leonid Roderick will be happy to see him go because they didn't didn't exactly uh, see eye to eye. Haven't exactly seen eye to eye this year. Um, Volpe's determined to get Packer Carroll every every shot that they can at winning a race. Uh, Leonard Roderick, I don't think, uh, agrees with that. Uh, Packer Carroll in this two car certainly wants to beat Leonard Roderick if if, if he's going to beat anybody. But um, no, he's uh, he's pitting the two cars. So I guess I ah that's right because Packer Carroll had that puncture earlier on in the race. And uh, he ran, and he was getting low on low on fuel there. There we go. Danny Savin in the 81, continuing to have a pretty strong run. He's gonna have a decent enough finish if he keeps running where he is in this 81 car. Uh, not going to win the Independence Trophy, but head on the back to the rock star. He's had a solid season uh, with what limited opportunities opportunities he's had. He's a two-time Cariola winner. Ben Huron, on the other hand, just he just needs to bring it home. And he's got the Independence Trophy with his name right on it. So Ben Huron, the Welshman in the hunt lane, is going could be uh, toppling Tom Moore again. And I think if there's anyone who is probably groaning, it's Tom Moore. Because this will be the second year in a row that he would have lost the Independence Trophy in the final race. Well, anyways, the final Independence Trophy uh, race, that is. It's Kurt Pliskin and Chris Davenport pit again in what I can only describe as a completely mindless strategy. Marcus Leonard in the triple nine car is falling through the field. Last year, Marcus Leonard uh, jammed up the whole field so much that Davina Hendon was able to build up a huge lead and run away with the race. Not exactly the same case uh, here today, but Marcus Leonard is still having a really strong run in front of the home crowd, which is good for Marcus Leonard because he needs that. Uh, his one and only career win actually came here two years ago. Ian Cooper in the triple seven car on the inside of Peter Short. He's been wanting to do this all year. He doesn't get to very often. Ian Cooper goes right on by Peter Short. And good Lord, that is a bright pink on the front of that car. Uh, Ian Cooper uh, going around Peter Short. No, Peter Short, the four-time world champion fighting back. Peter Short, we're not sure if he'll be back at that team next year or if he'll be running in this series next year. I think it'll largely depend on whether or not he wants to. Cooper trying to swing around him. Short giving him a hard time. Peter Short racing Ian Cooper very hard. Ian Cooper doing likewise in that obnoxiously bright pink 777 car. Why on earth does that car have pink wheels on it? Entering turn 14. Cooper on the inside in, this, in the Lysander car. Peter Short goes a bit wide. No, not quite. They're still side by side. Kurt Fliskin is sitting back there hoping they both wreck because that'll be two positions CST can make up easily. Peter Short slides it around and Peter Short off the road. Peter Short gave that one everything he had, but Ian Cooper and that, oh God, that is a bright pink car. Held on to that, held on to the spot. It's Davina Henton on the inside of Leonard. Henton, last gasp move. There's not too many laps to go. Henton has had enough of seeing the, the back end of that triple nine car. Leonard fighting back now. Marcus Leonard fighting back in that triple nine car. No sponsor on that car because of all the dramas that happened of, that are going on with the Umbrella Corporation lawsuits. And ah, the other Lynx car is up ahead. Ah, let's see if Melanie Cleveno can be teammate of the year and help Davina Henton out here. 
I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping to see what, see if uh, something like that happens here because, um, to be quite honest, some people may uh, really despise team orders, but they can make some of the on-track action a lot more interesting um, in context. Ah, uh, not quite. Henton doesn't need to use Melanie Cleave, no. There we go. Henton got by without using teamwork. Oh, Leonard spins it on his own, but he saves it. Marcus Leonard spun the car on his own, saved it with the help of the curb. He lost another spot to Arto Kakinim, better than damaging the car, especially since if that was the case, he would have to pay for it because he's the majority stakeholder in Fluffy Penguin, Penguin Onion Burger Incorporated. As uh, Luciano Savaral now closing in on Gaspar D'Souza for that, fine, for that uh, second place, D'Souza trying to hang on for everything he's worth. Gaspar D'Souza in that distinct teal and black car trying to hang on, but Michael Sykes when he rounds the final corner here to take the win, he will take not only that, but he'll also have led the most laps today. He will have led 18 of the 40 laps compared to Gaspar D'Souza's 17. Sykes, great run there. Luciano Savaro completes the podium, but doesn't get by D'Souza. Runs out of time to do that. Ashby comes home fourth. Rodder completes the top five. Henton sneaks up into, snuck up into sixth, and Kakin into seventh. And you saw Marcus Leonard throw it off after having a solid run. Ben Huron in that 43 car, a top 10 result. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. Ian Cooper completes the top 10 after getting punted by Kurt Pliskin on the first lap. Comes back, off cycle strategy, and he beats Kurt Pliskin to the line, and that's not even with a time penalty. Pliskin has not been given a penalty yet. Oh, I suspect that may change. But uh, Cooper beats Pliskin on the track, and Pliskin was the one who ran into the back of him in the first place. Chris Davenport and Adrian Devereaux had pretty solid runs. Devereaux not what he wanted out of this week, but uh, 13th is probably the best he could have done with all the damage he had. Peter Short, solid run to 14th. It's a statement I've been saying quite often. Solid run by Peter Short. Packer Carroll, um, well, he qualified 16th, and he finished 15th, so that's an improvement despite a puncture mid-race. Danny Sauv and Kevin Dwyer, I think we're looking for more than that. Scott Stoidler had a multitude of problems, but overcame them anyway to finish 18th. Darren Cardell and Scott Bates complete the points finishers. Scott Bates was off cycle and had more problems and uh, had uh, quite a few problems. And Darren Cardell, well, I think the less said about uh, what his pit crew could do, the better, because I think he would have finished a lot higher had his pit crew not been a bunch of stooges. But there's still one more race after this. Michael Sykes leads the Drivers' Championship, and as you see there, Matthias Taub and Zelda Ashby are the only two that can catch him. And that's why we have only showed the top three in the championship, because they're the only ones that could walk away with the TM Master Cup Series Drivers' title. Everyone else has been mathematically eliminated, and to be quite honest, all three of them could reasonably win the Drivers' Championship at Decatur. Ashby is going to need a bit of help. We'll need to finish in the top 10. But Ashby's a very quick driver and leads the series in top 10s. 15 in 21 races. So I think that is definitely f uh, feasible for FPO. Matthias Taub uh, is aiming to be the first Swede to win the title. And Carl Richter has won every just about everything you can win, really. He's won races in Formula A in the 70s. In the 80s, of course, Carl Richter, big name in IndyCar racing, has won the Indianapolis 500 uh, 16 times, and uh, he has yet to win the Master Cup. He's got a really good shot now. Michael Sykes, though, is retiring at the end of this year uh, from Master Cup Series racing, and could he, in his final Master Cup Series season, take home the Drivers' Championship? He's definitely the title favorite, but at Decatur, anything can happen. And this isn't really a surprise, but Ben Huron has taken out the Independence Trophy for this year, and I'm pretty sure Tom Moore is uh, devastated because this is the second year that this has happened to him in a row. Tom Moore in that 52 car, that Big Mac racing entry. I'm surprised he hasn't been picked up for a full-time seat yet, but I have, a, I have a pretty good feeling that we'll see both Moore and Huron on the grid next year. That being said, there is still one race left to be contested for this Master Cup Series season, and it will be at the infamous Decatur Raceway in Central Illinois.